Verse 2 does not describe a chaotic state. Okay. This is a complete misunderstanding of the text. When okay. the text says that the earth is without form and void, what that means is that the earth is an uninhabitable waste. The same mm-hmm. expression, tohu wabohu, is used to describe the desolated land ravaged by war. It's uh, a state of desolation and uh, inhospitable to life. It is not the Greek idea of a chaos. Quite the contrary. The way the uh, primordial ocean is described is that it has a surface uh, above which the Spirit of God is hovering. Below it is the dry, uh, the land that will eventually emerge and be the dry land. It is ordinary water that will eventually fill the streams and oceans and lakes and will fall from the sky as rain and as such has the usual properties associated with water, such as liquidity, a certain specific density, uh, a Mm -hmm. certain surface tension, uh, and so on and so forth that ancient Israelites would have been familiar with. So this is anything but a chaos. It is a highly ordered state. It is a dark uh, ocean of water. I think that if an Israelite reading this passage were to imagine it in his mind, it would be what an Israeli sailor would experience on a moonless night, uh, overcast out on the Mediterranean Sea, a dark ocean of water uh, that um, is the, is, precedes the emergence of the dry land and God's creation of life. So, uh, so to, to the clarifying of that, you know, I've, I've heard people say that a lot of the, the, the water language is, is in fact just that chaos language. Uh, like and that's in, in incorrect. Job, that's incorrect. So like, like in the book of Revelation where, where he says oh. like, there's going to be no sea, there's going to be no water, like the, the beast comes out of the, the sea, that these kinds of, this is imagery of chaos language, well, let, and not necessarily Genesis, but like forward. Yeah, let's not draw in these okay. other books of the Bible. Uh, That would be bad hermeneutics to impose things like the book of Revelation written hundreds of years later by another other context upon the interpretation of Genesis. We need to understand Genesis um, within the context of the Pentateuch and against the background of ancient Near Eastern thought. For example, the myths of Mesopotamia and and Egypt. And Mm -hmm. many, many scholars have misunderstood Genesis 1-2, to be a reflection of a kind of primordial chaos associated, for example, with Egyptian myths, when in Mm -hmm. fact it is utterly distinct from those myths in this regard, and as I say, describes an ordinary ocean filled with ordinary water that would eventually be in our lakes and oceans and and rivers and fall from the sky. Okay. So then I think that partly answers one of the questions I was going to ask, which was, do you believe in a pre-creation chaos theory? The idea that Genesis 1-2 actually chronologically precedes Genesis 1-1, where Genesis 1-1 describes sort of God ordering the universe, but then Genesis 1-2 describes the state of, of chaos that preceded that, what I'm hearing is, no, you don't believe that that's, theory. You're right. I think that's quite a mistake. Further confirmation of my claim would be the fact that the flood returns the earth to its primordial condition. Um, mm-hmm. And the flood is clearly not a chaos in the Greek right. sense. It has a surface. There are There's a boat, an ark, floating on top of it. It's covering the mountains. Uh, There are clouds above that give rain, birds flying in the air. The the return of the earth to its primordial condition in the flood is definitely not a return to some kind of chaos. Mm 